it's a great pleasure to be back in Vienna. So I've um, visited the city many times, including um, several very nice visits, visits to the KGRC. So it's a great treat to be back. Um, so uh, if anyone actually looked at the program, you may realize that if you looked at an old version of the program, this wasn't the original title. So I was actually scheduled to talk about um, something else rather different. So if you came expecting a talk about Easton's theorem with preservation of large cardinals, you've been robbed and you should <laughs> demand your money back. Um, so I'm going to talk about um, uh, kind of it's a combinatorial problem um, that came up in a topological setting. Um, I don't know how to do it, so I'm going to describe the problem and then I'm going to um, represent some, well, I called them partial results. Maybe a more honest labeling would be a failed attempt to do the problem. <laughs> but it, it's not quite clear that it's a failure, um, but it certainly isn't a success. So, um, starting off with um, the two key ordering, let's see. Okay, so um, the two key ordering, um, my understanding is historically it came um, from a problem in um, topology involving comparing different notions of convergence that if you have a directed set then that can be the index set for a net which is a kind of generalized sequence but um, actually the ordering is rather nice and the ordering makes perfect sense in the setting of post sets not just directed post sets so let's just do everything in generality so you consider a pair of post sets p and q and you ask for about functions from P to Q which map co-final sets in P to co-final sets in Q. I'm going to start off with a, a very trivial remark that suppose F has got this property of mapping co-final sets to co-final sets. So now fix your favorite point in Q, then I'm going to claim that there is a cone in um, P above some P primes that had better map above it because, again, you know, it's just logic in its most pejorative sense. Um, there must be such a point because otherwise um, any point has a point above it um, which isn't above Q, but then you have a failure of mapping cofinal sets to cofinal sets. No, no. That's, No, no, I really don't. No, I'm just saying, um, look at your favorite Q, right? Look at, um, you know, is it the case or not? If every P has a P primed above it, which doesn't get above Q, then the collection of things that don't get above Q is cofinal, right? And yet it's mapped to, right? something that, it, that isn't above Q, so you fail to dominate Q. Yeah, no, there, there's no appeal to directedness here. Um, okay, so you've got a function going the other way, and you've got this equation which says, you know, you can read it going in both directions. It's saying something about how cones in Q, cones in P, and the functions P and Q interact. Okay, so kind of conversely, uh, okay, conversely, if you've got that equation, then you're going to have the property that you map cofinal sets in P to cofinal sets in Q. It just follows directly from this equation. Take your favorite cofinal set in P and take your favorite point in Q. You'd like to get above it with F, so you go over with G back to P, dominate using the cofinal set in P, and then go back with F to Q. So, um, and like I say, it's, a, it's, a, it's an amusing little exercise in the rudiments of POSETs for your students. Um, and then, you know, it goes the other way with the word cofinal replaced by the word unbounded. So if G maps unbounded sets to unbounded sets, then you're going to be able to find an F which satisfies star. And if you can find an F which satisfies star, then you're mapping unbounded, then G is mapping unbounded sets to unbounded sets. Okay, so 
we can define a, we can make the collection of post sets, well, sadly, not quite into a post set, but into a pre-ordering. That's kind of the point. There's a there's a notion of two key equivalence. So for some reason it's called the two key ordering, usually, even though it's only a pre-ordering. And P dominates Q in the two key ordering if and only if you have any of these various equivalent setups from the last slide. So you have a function going P to Q taking co-final to co-final, you have a function from Q to P taking unbounded to unbounded, or you just have a pair of functions satisfying star. Okay, so yeah, so like I say, historically um, Tsuki was interested in, um, in nets. I think this is more Smith convergence, sometimes called the notion of convergence along a net. So the idea is, you know, maybe you want to form the closure of a set in a situation where just taking limits of omega sequence isn't, isn't enough. That's, that's your thing. Um, all right, when P and Q are directed and P and Q are two key equivalent, which means, you know, this two key, this two key thing is just a pre-ordering, but if P dominates Q and Q dominates P and P and Q are directed, well, then you can find a directed set in which you can embed them both. And now I am talking about order-preserving maps, but, um, so like I say, historically, it's got something to do with topology in the sense of the theory of convergence. Um, okay, so now here, here's where the topology comes in. So we can look, um, I think different people at different times have looked at different classes of topological spaces. But let's just let X be a reasonably arbitrary topological space. So then what we can do is we can look at a certain poset, which is the collection of compact subsets of the space, ordered by inclusion. And then there's kind of a theme in um, set theoretic topology of looking at some collection of X's, spaces of interest to you, hitting them with K and getting some naturally associated collection of posets, and then asking how those various posets sit in the two key ordering with respect to some kind of standard posets. So, um, okay, so for example, uh, Let's take the class of separable, metrizable spaces, and then let's collect up all of the posets that you associate in this way to such spaces. Okay, so there's an old theorem that actually, um, if you are dominant, when I say omega to the omega, um, it's going to come up various, it's an issue that's going to come up various times in this talk. When I talk about some Cartesian power or without qualification, I'm thinking of it as an ordered set under pointwise domination. So omega to the omega here is functions from omega to omega under everywhere domination. So it turns out if you're everywhere, sorry, if you're Tukey dominated by omega, if you're poset, of compact sets is dominated by omega to the omega, then you're Polish. So Fremlin, um, ah, okay, good. Um, so Fremlin got interested in this, and Fremlin analyzed an initial segment of um, what this collection of posets under the Tukey ordering is actually going to be like. So it turns out, no surprises, uh, you know. If, it's not very exciting, right? If M is actually compact, then, you know, there's nothing very interesting going on in the post set of compact sets. Uh, okay, there's exactly one immediate successor in this setup, which is the class which um, has got the locally compact, non compact sets in it. Remember, everything's separable and metrizable. Okay, then immediately above that, you have a class corresponding to the things which are Polish, but not locally compact. And then everything else is going to be strictly above omega to the omega in the ordering. All right, 
So, okay, so um, I was gonna say, that the way that I got interested in this topic was, as some of you probably know, uh, Paul Gutzide is a set theoretic topologist at the University of Pittsburgh, and um, he sometimes shows up at the logic seminar at CMU with his students in tow and interesting questions in set theory. And um, so he came to our seminar and pointed me to a series of papers he wrote with his student. I apologize if there's anyone, anyone I guess, Georgian in the audience. Um, Mamatalashvili, I believe is the name. Anna Mamatalashvili. Um, so they wrote a series of, I think by my count, three papers about the of um, the post, well, when I say the structure of K of X, I guess really I'm, I'm one level down from where I want to be. Really the, the collection of post-sets of the form K of X for various spaces of X considered under the Tukey ordering. And looking at this, they found it natural to define associated with directed post-sets P a certain invariant they called the spectrum. So they said it this way, though it's going to turn out to be just a familiar concept in the theory of posets seen from a slightly unfamiliar angle. So they said, let's let P directed poset with no largest elements, which are kind of natural in um, a commentary context, obviously. So then they defined the spectrum of P to be the set of regular cardinals kappa where P dominates kappa in the Tukey ordering. Okay, so this is actually a roundabout way of saying something that's familiar, I think, to many people, because, um, you know, in terms of the F characterization, is a mess, but in terms of, of course, it's saying something utterly familiar. It's saying you just have a kappa sequence of points in the poset such that any subfamily of size kappa is unbounded. And if you're familiar with the concept of the caliber, this is exactly the set of kappa such that P doesn't have kappa as a caliber. So, uh, all, right. all right. So now, as you probably detected from the title of my talk, all of this is supposed to have something to do with PCF theory. So, uh, okay, again, at the risk of boring probably a large majority of the audience, but just to set up some reference points. So, what's PCF theory about? It's about a certain operation on sets of regular cardinals, or, well, that's a, a point of view you can take. Um, so, you have A, a set of regular cardinals. PCF of A is just by definition the set of regular cardinals where kappa is the cofinality of some ultra product. So, just take an ultra filter U. I should have said emission here on A. So, take an ultra filter and, um, you know, by Wash's theorem, if you take the ultra product, of a bunch of linear orders, you're going to get a linear order. These are regular cardinals, so, you know, this ultra product here is a linear order with no largest element. It's got a cofinality, which is a regular cardinal. Um, okay, if you actually know PCF theory, then you'll know that this is rather a glib description of what's going on in PCF theory. Well, really super glib. I mean, um, What's really going on is more to do with ideals, really more to do with sequences of ordinal valued functions which are increasing modulo some ideal and various kinds of least upper bounds that such a sequence might have. So in particular, you know, for the purposes of developing PCF theory, you should really replace the um, ultra filter U by an ideal I and maybe you should re replace the word, replace the idea of cofinality, which is more relevant to linear orderings, by the idea of true cofinality, which is what makes sense for some reduced products. Anyway, long story short, Charlotte developed a sophisticated structure theory for sets of regular cardinals 
it's highly relevant to singular cardinals. So one of the main kinds of impetus for the development of PCF theory was the study of the singular cardinals hypothesis. Um, so if you want to use PCF theory to study the combinatorics of a singular cardinal, lambda, well, then you say, well, okay, it's a singular cardinal, but that certainly there are co-finally many regular cardinals below it. In fact, since it's singular, there's a comparatively rather small set of regular cardinals below it. So thinking along those lines, it's natural to look at the sets of regular cardinals which are called progressive. So you're a progressive set. Um, there's a little bit of wiggle room here. Honestly, it's okay if your cardinality is smaller than your minimum element, or even if there's only finitely many members of you kind of below your cardinality, that's fine. Because we care about ultrafilters and you know, ultrafilters that are principal. Think about it for a second. Ultrafilters that are principal are not very interesting in this setup. Okay, but this is the usual definition of progressive sets. There's a very rich structure theory for um, PCF of A on the hypothesis that A is a progressive set. So, for example, you know, if A is a progressive interval of regular cardinals, then there are no holes. The PCF is also an interval of regular cardinals. And it's still kind of a mystery when and whether PCF of A is progressive. I mean, more is known than used to be. But if PCF of A is progressive, then PCF of PCF of A is actually equal to the PCF of A. And then you could really get going using ideas from topology where you think of PCF as a closure operation on PCF of A. Um, that's not what this talk is about, perhaps fortunately. Uh, all right, so Gartside and Mamatul Ashfali, for, for reasons that will become clearer on the next slide, but I wanted to do this slide first, um, got very interested in the connection between the PCF of A and the spectrum of just the product of A under the everywhere domination ordering. So in particular, this one's actually very easy. If you're a member of the PCF of A, then you're a member of the spectrum of the product of A. And again, just like omega to the omega earlier in the talk, this is just a poset which I'm currently viewing with the everywhere domination ordering. Okay, that's very, very easy. So that's not even PCF theory homework. Um, all right, this one is actually, I mean, if you know the rudiments of PCF theory, if you know, for example, about the PCF generators and the ideals J less than lambda, and how the generators interact with the ideals, then you won't find the second one very hard either. If you're progressive, then actually your PCF of, your set, of a set is just literally equal to the spectrum of the product. All right, um, so almost progressive is a being a finite union of progressive sets, which might seem like a, you know, Maybe it's not much in advance. I mean, from the point of view of PCF theory, but also from the point of view of, if you like, spec theory, there's nothing very interesting happening if you take the union of finitely many sets. It's kind of completely obvious for PCF. If, if A is the union of finitely many sets, and you've got an ultrafilter on A, then ultra, the ultrafilter concentrates on one of those sets, and you're in a, well, you can do some things for spec. Uh, uh-oh, okay, good. Maybe I have too many pauses in my document. All right, um, all right. so one reason for um, thinking about almost progressive sets is actually, you know, by an easy um, inductive kind of argument, so if the size of your set of regular cardinals is rather small, least than, less than the least cardinal fixed point, then you're automatically almost progressive. Okay, and again, I've got a typo here. I should really be asking, does the PCF of A coincide with the spectrum of the product of A? All right. Um, 
so that's the question. So before I say what, what, what little I know about you know, the possible answer to that question, let me just um, fill in a little, a little of why one might care if one's a certain kind of topologist about these matters. All right, so first, it turns out um, Q, you know, from this perspective, Q is actually more interesting as a topological space than you might at first think. So, <laughs> uh, so the spectrum, remember K of Q is the poset of um, compact subsets of Q in the, in the natural inherited topology. All right, so the spectrum of KQ is actually pretty perfect understanding of the spectrum of omega to the omega, there's not much going on. Um, second thing, the spectrum of omega to the omega, well, again, we can decompose further, and now we've got an old friend of many, many people in this room, omega to the omega under the eventual domination ordering. Okay, so now maybe we're closer to our home territory. Um, all right, so again, just really very, very easy stuff that if you're a regular cardinal in the spectrum under eventual domination, again, if you know all about calibers, none of this is remotely surprising. If you're a regular cardinal in the spectrum, then you sit somewhere between B and D, and you contain B and the cofinality of D. Um, oh, there was, okay, now I'm missing a pause, darn it. All right, um, so, Spec is a set of regular cardinals. If it's progressive, then it's equal to its own PCF. And then a consistency result. If A is almost progressive, then you can actually force to make the spectrum equal to the PCF of A. Um, so none of this is really very hard. In particular, um, the last one is just really, really easy. It's just Heckler forcing. So if you know, um, I think people tend to do linear kind of iterations of Heckler forcing, but you don't need to. If you have a poset, um, I guess if you have a poset which is countably directed, I think that's the right property, then you so any countable collection, countably upwards directed. If you've got a post set where any countably many things in the post set have an upwards, um, then you can just do a kind of non-linear iteration, if you like to think of it that way, of Heckler forcing, and embed that post set co-finally in omega to the omega under eventual domination. So using, just using that business, so the mystery CCC forcing here is just a suitable Heckler forcing. You embed the product of A, and then you see that you've, you know, by easy theorems that you've got this. Okay, so that's just some kind of background to say, you know, why you, why you might, as a reader of Gottsied and Mammoth Lashfully, why you might be interested, oh, let me, Give it here a second. Why, why you might be interested in this elementary seeming question for a general A, so for an A which is not progressive, what's the connection between the PCF of A and the spec of A? All right, so I don't know. Um, so like I say, it's the question, does PCF equal spec? Um, so remember, let me just go back, a, uh, too many pauses now. Um, so remember, PCF's contained in spec, so the question is going to be, when is the PCF going to be a proper subset of the spec? Okay. So I want to find a situation in which there's something missing from the PCF but in the spec. All right. Okay, so here is in the last, se from the last session, section, I can see that I'm, I'm actually going to finish early, so I don't think anyone ever got lynched for finishing early as the last lecture of the day. So um, here is a kind of scenario 
for getting to an answer. I think I don't see really any reason why PCF should equal spec. Um, so here is some kind of sketches of an idea for showing consistently that PCF is not the same as spec. So I'm going to take a strongly inaccessible cardinal and I'm just going to take some unbounded set of successor cardinals below kappa and I'm going to say kappa is definitely missing from the PCF of A. Okay, that is actually easy. Um, the thing to remember though, um, maybe the reason it's not completely obvious is, you know, especially if you're a set theorist, you think, well, you know, the only interesting ultrafilters are just normal measures, right? The only interesting ultrafilters around kappa are normal measures on kappa because obviously kappa is measurable. Okay, then there's nothing, it's not very exciting, but you know, in this general setup, well, it's not hard. So suppose that you've actually got kappa as the cofinality of a product. Okay, and now fix something witnessing that kappa is the cofinality of this product. So fix a scale in the jargon of PCF theory, fix an increasing and cofinal set. Um, no, one of two things happen, both of which we can dismiss in fairly short order. So, well, the first thing that might happen is the ultrafilter U might concentrate on a proper initial segment of A. And of course, in that case, there is obviously no chance of this sequence being cofinal because the only bit that's relevant is the functions in the scale restricted to B, which has measure one, and there just aren't that many functions in the product of B, so we're golden, all right? Um, all right, so if you don't concentrate, maybe it's an ultrafilter, so if U doesn't concentrate on initial segment, then U concentrates on tails, and it's just very, very easy, trivial really, to take my sequence Fi and dominate it modulo tails. You just diagonalize in the most naive way. And if you, don't, if you diagonalize in the most naive way, well, then you get something which dominates every function on a tail. All right, I mean, you can't be too naive, right? Because for sure, if I carelessly left out this superscript plus here and just said alpha less than kappa, then I'd be in all kinds of trouble at this point. If kappa's measurable, for example, <laughs> for sure kappa's in the PCF if the collection of alpha's less than kappa. So, you know, there, there's a little something going on. All right, so well and good. Um, okay, so strongly inaccessible, I can keep kappa out of the PCF. All right, here's a consistency result. Um, it is possible for kappa to be in the spectrum of one of these products. Um, okay, so why is this not, why is this theorem plus the previous silly lemma not the answer to the question? Um, because kappa is only weakly inaccessible here, and um, that's really kind of irritating. So I'll, I'll say more about it at the end since I'll certainly have time. All right, so, uh, not really that hard, but um, yeah. And actually, I think I can. Um, in, the, in the course of thinking about this, I think I wrote down several different forcing extensions which are going to do this. But they all they all have the same the same vice, and the vice is that they blow up power sets below kappa to kappa, preserving cofinalities and cardinals. So you're only ending up with a weak and accessible. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take Kappa's Marlow, so A0 is a stationary set, the regular cardinals below Kappa, uh, and maybe, maybe inaccessible, actually, yeah, uh, typo. I think really inaccessible is below Kappa, is what I meant. And then I'm going to take the successors of those guys. And that's going to be the um, space that's going to, you know, the product of A is going to be the space that carries my sequence. Well, 
Okay, clearly I don't understand how to use pauses with Beamer because these were, these were all supposed to come one by one, but they all came at once. All right, so it's a forcing construction. So uh, I'll draw a picture in a second. So the domain is these guys, pairs J alpha. So the idea is I'm giving information about Fj of alpha where um, J is, um, Fj of alpha is going to be something less than alpha plus. So on the alpha side, and then for each alpha, I'm going to have an eastern support on the J side, but it only starts above alpha. So the picture is, uh, picture is going to be something like this. There's an eastern set here, and then, okay, it's a pretty generic picture, but you get the idea. Um, all right, so, um, so what, what this is, I mean, it's like an eastern product of eastern products of some very simple-minded forcing. All right, so um, the main point and the argument is, of course, I would like to argue that um, any kappa subsequence of the generic functions that I've added is unbounded. So remember, I'm looking in the product of A's. So when I say unbounded, I mean unbounded in the eventual domination ordering. Being unbounded in the eventual, sorry, I misspoke. I completely misspoke. Being unbounded in the total domination ordering. If you want to be unbounded in the total domination ordering, you just have to be unbounded on one coordinate. All right, so that's all I got to do. I got to um, find a coordinate on which I'm unbounded in X. Okay, so I, I just do, you know, you just follow your nose, right? Um, so, all right, so, you just do it, you know? I mean, it's kind of tedious because there are all of these eastern sets floating around, so you have to do some thinning out on the alpha axis to get some kind of head tail tail delta system with a root, and then you have to do some more thinning out, so even though I've got time, I'm certainly gonna spare you the gory details of that. You do some more thinning out, and then Somehow, like I said, there are several different choices of support um, that should make this work. Um, you do have to be a little bit careful about not collapsing the alpha pluses. If you're trying to do, if you're trying to imagine this construction for yourself, um, I found it was surprisingly easy to be adding generic subjections from alpha onto alpha plus. So don't do that. All right, um, but then. You know, you just you just do just follow your nose, and um, what comes into the following kind of situation? You get some alpha where you're really kind of uncommitted because it's in some gap in this head tail tail delta system, and you get a bunch of coordinates up here which you have decided are the values, some, some alpha plus many, so alpha plus values of eta i. So remember, you know, pi, remember pi forces eta i hat, I guess to be a bit more punctilious in x dot, so now, like I say, um, you know, if you were just proving, if you just wanted to prove that this POSAT has the, the kappa CC, you know, all you need is two compatible PIs. But for the purposes of this kind of thing, you know, you need alpha plus many PIs for some value of alpha where the PIs have given you a great deal of freedom. And then, You've got generic freedom to write in whatever values you like. So you can take alpha plus many values of pi and find a common lower bound where you can mess things up on this, this free coordinate alpha. All right, so that's the first piece of good news. Um, there's even more good news. Um, 
I said, if, if you squint at this kind of poset for a little while, um, you can view it as some kind of Eastern product of Eastern products. And things are kind of getting better and better as you go further this way because, you know, these columns, remember these columns have Eastern support, but the columns only start above a certain point. So um, it's not hard, you know, again by, well, no. It's not hard, but it is kind of tedious to factor this POSA in various directions and convince yourselves that it preserves cardinals and cofinalises. Okay, so that's a happy thing. I've got this unbounded set of successor cardinals um, below my kappa, and um, I've got kappa in the spectrum of their product, and kappa used to be a strongly inaccessible cardinal, so that's, that's all to the good. Um, all right, bad news. Uh, after forcing kappa is just weakly inaccessible, but not strongly inaccessible. And uh, if you think about it for a moment, that is actually completely unsurprising because if you think about what a condition is looking at, looking like out to alpha, uh, you know, there's all kinds of freedom below alpha in all these rows of a condition. So you're adding, you know, for any reasonable alpha, you're actually adding kappa many generic subsets of alpha. So um, this isn't strictly right, but this is roughly what's kind of what's going on. If you, if you imagine it's 1963 and you're Eastern and you're starting with a model of GCH and you're starting off with kappa and you have many regular cardinals below inaccessible kappa and you like with an Eastern product to blow up all of their power sets to kappa, then you know this, this forcing this force is more complicated than that, but that's the kind of thing it is. All right, so kappa is a regular limit, but it's not strong limit. Uh, so, so like I say, now I get to the bit where you know my, my scenario is broken down, but I, I haven't completely completely lost hope. So quickly. Quickly reversing. Uh, all right. Uh, where did I use strong inaccessibility of kappa in this setup? Really, only only in this subcase, right? If I'm in the subcase where the kind of ultrafilter that I'm worried about is an ultrafilter that concentrates on some strict initial segment of A. You know, this, this other bit is completely soft and doesn't even mention the power set function, that sort of operation. So, okay. So cap is a regular limit, but it's not a strong limit. So I can't directly appeal to the trivial lemma. So now I'd like to say, but look, you know, it's this kind of pathetic pleading, right? Mm -hmm. well, well, I guess we're from denial to bargaining, right? So, Kappa used to be strongly inaccessible, so surely some kind of covering argument, this is just a very Eastern-like forcing, so it decomposes in many places as the product of something closed and something with some chain condition. Uh, yeah. But now it, now it gets a little painful because you know, remember I've blown up all of these power sets of regular cardinals below kappa to kappa. If you know, if you know your way around Eastern products, you know that actually there are certain initial segments of Eastern products that don't actually have super nice chain condition, right? But, um, you know, when you get up, for example, to a singular cardinal, or even, you know, um, some kind of non marlow inaccessible, then um, you don't have quite as much chain condition as at first you might naively think. So that's, that's where this seems to run into the sands, that in this kind of model, I can't seem to rule out this nasty phenomenon where kappa somehow ends up in the PCF of a, a bounded chunk of my set of successes. I mean, I feel that it shouldn't be true, but I, I can't prove it. Um, 
So, all right, so the, the other thing you might say is, well, look, you are obviously, my friend, you are obviously using the wrong supports, and you should just modify your supports, and then everything will be great. But actually, um, you know, you can, um, you know, there are, lot, there are lots of things you can try, but the fact that I, well, the fact that I don't want to collapse the alpha pluses on the one hand, and the fact that I want to do this particular style of amalgamation where there's a whole, there's an alpha, you know, there's a ton of free coordinates in these vertical sections. That kind of militates against um, preserving the strong inaccessibility of Kappa. So, as I said, you know, this, is, this, is, this reports a, a currently failed attempt to, to resolve the question whether PCF is equal to spec. And um, one of the reasons I'm, you know, uh, the talk I was going to give, you know, it was a problem. I solved it. It was done. So, so this this is this is open, and maybe you know, this, maybe someone here just instantly sees how to do it, which I'd be very happy about. Be happy to tell Paul about. Anyway, I'm that's, I'm done.